As a psychiatric nurse practitioner, most of my treatment has been in traditional modalities, CBT, DBT, supportive counseling, pharmaco pharmacology. Most of my clients also have been victims of trauma. On December 14, 2012, I was at work at a hospital in Queens, and I received a phone call from a friend that there had been shoot a shooting in one of the schools in Newtown. Um, I drove home as quickly as I could. Um, I was very fortunate that day. I was able to pick up all three of my children from school. 26 people were gunned down that day, 20 children and six educators in less than 11 minutes. The town of Newtown was fortunate in the fact that many um, mental health people came to town um, to see how they could help. One of the organizations that offered help was an organization called EGALA. Um, I've been in the field for 30 years. I've never heard of EGALA. Um, they actually were founded in 1999. They're an international organization, and they train people in um, equine-assisted psychotherapy. The premise of the therapy is there is a licensed mental health clinician um, who becomes trained, partnered with an equine specialist who is a horse expert, a herd of horses, and the client. Um, my friend, Annette, at the time of the tragedy, immediately opened up her farm to the community. Um, the Agala folks went there, they did some treatment. She also let families go there just to have a, a safe space to be. In 2013, a year later, when I felt I had time to process the event myself, Annette came to me and asked me if I would become certified. So I said, sure. The certification was um, unlike any other training I've been to. Um, it was in an indoor horse arena. Um, you're all bundled up. There were about 30 folks there, and there was a herd of horses running around. Um, as I was sitting there with the horse people and the mental health people, um, Someone said, oh, the horses will show us the way. The horses will let us know what to do. And I was thinking to myself, really? Um, being a science-based nurse practitioner, um, I was a little skeptical of the whole equine therapy. Um, and as I was sitting there with my skepticism, I felt a push to the back of my head. I looked up, and standing above me was a 1,200-pound horse standing about six foot tall, looking into my eyes. At that moment, I felt that he could feel that I had an attitude. So I said, okay, let me open my mind up to the process. <clears throat> so my thoughts went further, and I thought to myself, well, why horses? Um, why not a different animal? Why equine-assisted psychotherapy? Well, I've learned a lot about horses um, since then. So horses um, like to be with other horses. They don't like to be alone. They like to be in a herd. Um, just like we don't like to be alone. We like to be with our families. We like to be with friends. We like to be in relationships. We like to have school friends. I mean, horses very much are the same way. Horses, like people, also have attitudes and distinctive personalities. So within their own herd, um, there's dynamics that go on, just like in human relationships. Who's in charge? Who's a follower? who's a passive, uh, who's annoying, who do they want to get out of the herd. Um, so it's very much in tune with people. Um, horses also, just being so large, are a perfect um, parallel when we want to face a trauma or something that's very difficult in our life. So the physical state of the horse also parallels the big obstacle that you might face. Um, back when horses were living in the wild, they were animals that were preyed upon. Um, so they had to have a very keen awareness of their environment and also different nonverbals in order to survive. They had to know when to run and flee. Um, so because of that, they have to also learn how to get along in their own herd. Um, if they can't get along and they're pushed out, then they are more vulnerable. Uh, Going back to science for a minute, um, Charles Darwin, who studied mammals, uh, learned that mammals all use similar muscles for facial expressions. Um, so horses, because of their ability to really observe their environment, can have the uncanny ability to read human emotion. And I think that day when I got knocked in the head, out of all the people in the circle, I think the horse was picking up on the attitude I had that day. 
Um, I want to speak a minute about um, PTSD. So post-traumatic stress disorder can happen, um, a series of trauma, it also can occur with a um, single event. Um, and the hypothesis about PTSD is that our autonom autonomic nervous system goes on overdrive. So we have that fight or flight response that I think everybody is familiar with. Everyone's had an experience in their life where they have that intense anxiety. Um, I was having it backstage, actually, just trying to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> um, so that's what happens. But with PTSD, it doesn't go away. So it's chronic, and you're constantly uncomfortable. Um, and there also could be triggers with PTSD. And you know what we learned with the um, work with the children and the adolescents and families in Newtown, that they were experiencing a lot of PTSD and a lot of triggers. Um, for example, if they heard a fire engine, that could be a trigger. Um, the 4th of July became a trigger with the fireworks. Um, kids complained of not being able to go to an amusement park because they couldn't tolerate hearing screams of other children, even though it was joyful screaming. Um, all the way to kids not even be able to enter a school, not wanting to go to a school, not wanting to drive past a school, not wanting to be on a bus, um, at home uh, being unable to sleep alone, wanting to go from different parts of their home with other people, just that intense um, overdrive of the fight or flight feeling. Um, my own son, who was, um, my kids were all in different schools. Um, none of them were in the Sandy Hook school, but my son was in fourth grade at the time in a different elementary school. And he had said to me that he couldn't concentrate anymore in school. When I asked him why, he said he was thinking about all day about how he could get out of the school in case an intruder came again. And he said he finally figured out how to get out, but he couldn't figure out how to get to the other side of the school to get his sister before he left. So, you know, this is, a, this is an example of how, you know, the trauma is in the school, but it really goes to the whole, um, whole periphery of the community. And, and trauma really is what your idea of the experience could be. So now we're back to um, 2013, and um, a lot of the kids, it had a year past the tragedy, a lot of the people that were helping were gone. Um, you know, Annette and I were trained at the time. Um, a lot of kids were stuck in their talk therapy. A lot of families said, forget it, we're not feeling better, we don't want to do, the, we don't want to do our therapy anymore. So we started seeing kids at the farm. Um, and you, know, you can see in the pictures, you see some of the uh, equipment there. So with equine assisted psychotherapy, there's a licensed mental health clinician, um, and there's an equine specialist and a herd of horses. And we also use a variety of um, different props. So we use pool noodles and po uh, cones, and um, we'll write different feeling states on the pool noodles, um, different uh, things they can move around the arena. So the child or adolescent or family arrives to the arena, and the first thing we say to them is, go get to know the horses. Oftentimes we're looked at, what do you mean, go get to know the horses? Um, kids today are so pressured about wanting to do things right that an open-ended statement like that really, we've noticed, elicits a lot of anxiety for them. Because they're like, well, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? And again, we say to them, well, however you, know, you want to do it, it's fine. It's about your experience. So some of the kids initially might want to um, brush a horse or groom a horse. Um, and an added bonus of that is there's been some studies that actually grooming a horse lowers the um, cortisol in our body, which is our stress hormone. So it's naturally relaxing. So I always get excited when I see a kid start to brush the horse at the beginning of the session. Um, I wanted to talk about one particular task that we've done in the sessions that's really been um, very helpful for the kids in Newtown. Uh, with the pool noodles, we ha asked the kids to build on the ground their house and then a path to their school. And then we asked them to put different obstacles along the path. And then they're told they have to take the herd of horses to their house, down the path, and to the school over the obstacles. Now, since horses mirror human facial expression, our body language, how we're feeling, the horses will mirror what's going on with the kid. So if the kid is anxious about going to school, that, they're not going to be able to get that horse down that, path, that noodle path. That, those horses are not going. So it really elicits a great opportunity for the child then to process what their own obstacles are. Um, so when the child is anxious, the horse is anxious. 
Um, if the child starts to feel better and empowered, the horses feel empowered. So it's a very remarkable feeling for the, for the child. Um, for the first time, many of the kids were able to talk about what they heard, saw, and felt um, the day of the shooting. So for them, it was really transforming. Um, I want to talk about a particular horse. I think he was in one of the slides you've seen. He's um, with a little girl. Um, his name is Willie. I want to give him a shout out tonight. Um, he's missing an eye. He had gotten an infection, and the eye was removed many years ago. And he's turned out to be one of the favorite horses of the children and the teens. Um, at first, when they see him with the gaping part where the eye should be, it's a little, they get taken aback a bit. Um, but once they see his resilience and how he's able to accomplish the task, his resilience, they feel the resilience as well. So he's been um, really a great horse for us to work with. Um, really, I have to say, uh, I never thought that I would be um, a fan of an alternative therapy, but um, re working with the kids and seeing the transformation has been nothing short of magical. Um, it's been an, an absolute honor um, to be part of the healing um, with the kids in my town. And I'm forever grateful um, to the wonderful horses that have helped uh, the kids and adolescents heal in Newtown. Thank you.